The National Communications Network, in collaboration with the National Center for Resource Development and the Ministry of Education, present CXC in Focus, a focus on the key subject areas of mathematics and English for students preparing to write the exams. Come to our final lesson, CXC Mathematics in Focus. Lesson 45. Solving trigonometric equations. In this lesson, we will continue to explore the graphs of trigonometrical functions and to use the graphs to solve trigonometric equations. First, let us examine graphs of some generic trigonometrical functions the sine function, the cosine function and the tangent function. Here is the graph of the sine function. It will be on the next slide. The angles are given in degrees. The radian measure is another way of expressing angular measurement. So first let us look at some angular equivalent for degree measure. Here is a table of conversion of degrees to radians. Zero degree is the same as zero radian. Thirty degrees in radian value would be pi divided by six. Forty-five degrees is pi over four radians. 60 degrees is pi over 3 radians. 90 degrees, pi over 2 radians. 120 degrees, 2 pi over 3 radians. 150 degrees, 5 pi over 6 radians. 180 degrees, pi radians. And if 180 degrees, will be converted to pi radians, 360 degrees would be twice that, which will be 2 pi radians. Now to the sine graph. The sine or cosine curve repeats itself for every interval of 360 degrees on either side, either side meaning positive or negative. The length of this interval is called the period. What is a cycle? If you look at the diagrams, you will see what is the period and what is the cycle. On the graph below, you would see that the cycle, one cycle, is between two consecutive humps. See that? two consecutive humps. So we have illustrated three cycles there. One going to the next. One starting at minus 360 and ending at zero. The other starting at zero and ending at 360. And the third one starting at 360 and ending at 720. What is this period? And look at the diagram there. We are looking at the second cycle. If you look at the second cycle, it's the angular distance between 360 and 0. And 360 then is called the period of, in this case, the cosine function. The sine function carries the same 360 period. And if you check it, you will recognize that the sine function has the same shape as the cosine function, the same wavy shape, but the starting point is different. And if you remember your transformation geometry, one graph is translated to the right or to the left so that it can fall exactly on the other graph. 
that is the sine graph can fall exactly on the cosine graph by a process of translation. Consider the following graph. The value of x maps to one value of y. That is, since that is happening, then y is equal to sine x is a function. Using a vertical line test, if we draw a vertical line anywhere along that graph, and if the vertical line cuts the graph only at one point, only then we can conclude that the graph represents a function. There are other lines, for example, if there is a circle, a graph that is a circle, and you draw a vertical line down, it will cut the circle at two points. Since it is cutting the circle at two points, then the circle is not, the equation of a circle is not a function. Let's come back to this problem here. If we are asked to determine the value of sine 90, on the x-axis you look for 90, draw a vertical line to the curve, and then a horizontal line to the x-axis, and read off the y-value. In this case, the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. And you can use your graph to determine this. Now, if you're asked to find from your graph, read off the value of sine 30 degrees, what are the steps you will follow? Along the x-axis, you locate 30 degrees and draw a vertical line up to the curve, the sine curve, and then draw a horizontal line to the y-axis, and you will discover that sine of 30 will reach exactly, the horizontal line will be at 0 0.5. And so it's a useful piece of information to remember that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to a half or 0 0.5. If you're asked to find sine 180 degrees, looking at the graph, you can read off the value. Sine of 180 degrees is 0. And so sine of 0 is 0 sine of minus 180 is also 0. And you can find many other 0 values for sine. Then you look at maximum and minimum points. And you'll find that at minus 90, the sine is minus 1. At 90, the sine is plus 1. At 360, the sine is 0. At 270, the sine is minus 1. And so you can read off values. And so for 0 0.5, at 0 0.5, if you draw a horizontal line to cut the sine curve, above the x-axis, it will cut the sine curve at four places, which would mean that there are four angles on the graph where the sine is a half. And so you can find for the angles that will give that the sine value will produce minus a half. So there are many activities or exercises you can generate from this one graph. Here's an example for you, example one, part A. Copy and complete the following table for y is equal to sine x. In the first row, we have x. In the second row, we have y. y is equal to sine x. So sine of 0 is 0. 
sine of 30, we found that a moment ago. You can check it on your calculator and put in the value. Sine of 60 is 0 0.87, and so the other values are given. The second part of the question, plot the graph of y is equal to sine x, and use your graph to find approximate solution to the equation sine x is equal to 0 0.3, where x is from 0 degrees to 360 degrees. Here is the solution. Sine 30 is 0 0.5. And you use your calculator, you will have the exact, exact values that we have on the table displayed there. These points are plotted on your graph paper. And you use your pencil to draw a smooth curve, smooth as you see on this slide. And that will be the graph of y is equal to sine x, stopping at 360 degrees. So you're starting at zero, then you go up to a maximum of one, come down to zero, then to a minimum of minus one, then back to zero. That's the graph of the function y is equal to sine x. But we are asked to find to solve the equation graphically when sine x is equal to 0 0.3. Now, y is 0 0.3, so sine x is equal to 0 0.3. So we look for the line at 0 0.3 above the x-axis and draw a horizontal line to cut the graph. And you notice there the graph is cut at two points there. We are asked to find the size of the angle that will solve that equation. Where the two graphs intersect will always provide you with a solution to the equation. So at the first intersection, we draw a vertical line down to the x-axis, which we, when we read that, we'll have values in degrees. And at the second intersection, we draw a vertical line down. It reaches a point just to the right of 150 degrees. And when you examine your results carefully on the graph paper, you would find that x is just about 17 degrees or 163 degrees. So the solution of the equation sine x is equal to 0 0.3 give us two answers for x. x is 17 degrees, or x is 163 degrees. Observe that the line y is equal to 2 passes through the middle of the curve y is equal to sine x plus 2. This is another equation or another function we are required to draw. If we know what the graph of y is equal to sine x is, adding 2 will be just increasing the values of sine x by 2 units up. So the second graph at the bottom is the graph y is equal to sine x, which we have just drawn a moment ago. Now y is equal to sine x plus 2 is to push the graph at the bottom two places up. So if we push it two places up or we translate the sine x graph two places up, will give us the graph y is equal to sine x plus 
2. So, where y is equal to 2, the equation of that line is y is equal to 2. This is the problem given to you in the last lesson, part 1. Given that y is equal to 2 minus cos x, copy and complete the table below. The table is given. Part 2. Using a scale of 2 cm to represent 30 degrees on the x-axis and 1 cm to represent 0 0.2 cm on the y-axis, draw the graph of y is equal to 2 minus cos x for x between 0 degree and 180 degrees. Part 2. Using the graph or otherwise, determine the value of x for which 2 minus cos x is equal to 1.8. Question taken from CXC January 2005. A similar question to the one we solved a moment ago. Here is the solution. The missing values for the table are now inserted. At 0, it's 1. At 30, it's 1.1. At 60, it's 1.5. That's 90, it's 2, and so on. Plotting those points and joining them using a smooth curve will give us that smooth curve you see there, y is equal to 2 minus cos x. That's the function. We are required to solve the equation the first the second part is drawing the graph see that smooth curve and the third part of the question x is approximately 78.5 degrees that is when we draw at 1.8 a horizontal line to cut the function y is equal to 2 minus cos x, at the point of intersection, we drop a vertical line down to the x axis and read off that value. And that value turns out to be 78.5 degrees, which is the value of x, which will satisfy the equation y is equal to 2 minus cos x which in turn will give us one, 2 minus cos x is equal to 1.8. So the solution to the equation 2 minus cos x is equal to 1.8 is x is equal to 78.5 degrees. Here are some hints for you for the examination that you would be writing sometime this week. For paper 1, paper 1 consists of 60 questions and the time to answer it is 90 minutes, which is equivalent to a minute and a half per question. So you have to time yourself well. Second hint, spend a few minutes to read the questions. This will allow you to decide which questions to answer first. Thirdly, answer the easiest questions first. Leave the challenging ones for the last. Four, use paper provided to do any calculations you may wish to do. That is rough work. For paper 1, this is important, use a 2B pencil to grid your answer on the answer sheet because it is a darker pencil 
And when the paper is marked using computers, the mark can be easily detected so that you can get the correct score. For each question, there are four options, and only one is correct. If you do not know for sure which one is the correct answer, make an intelligent guess. An intelligent guess is not any guess. You may use the options given to substitute in the problem to test which one is the correct answer. In other words, you work a little backwards. But you have to do that very quickly. 7. Answer all 60 questions. There is no penalty for guessing. Hints for paper 2. Paper 2 has two sections, section A and section B. All eight questions in section A are compulsory. Section B has six questions, two each on algebra, relations, functions, and graphs. So for that topic, two questions. Geometry and trigonometry, two questions. Vectors and matrices, two questions. You are required to answer any two questions, any two. From B. You can select one from algebra and one from geometry. No problem. Two. Section A is worth 90 marks and section B is worth 30 marks, 15 for each of the two questions. Time of a time of 10 minutes is given for you to read the question. And this is not counted. You're just given 10 minutes to read. And when you're reading, read all the questions. Read carefully and make your choices for the two questions from section 2. Remember, you have to answer all from section A. But you're asked to make choices in section B. Based on how much work you have done, you're able to make two good choices in section B. Four, work the easiest problems first. You may start from section two if you wish, because you have two questions, 30 marks, and if section A, you have eight questions, 90 marks. Do your calculation and see where you would put your effort the fifth part, the fifth hint, make sure that your geometrical instruments and calculator are functioning optimally. And I mentioned this to you earlier as we were going through our lessons. Make sure that the instrument you carry to the examination room is an instrument that you are familiar with and would have had extensive practice with. The sixth hint, Were rough work done must be tied to the answer booklet. Because sometimes we see a working but can't find, we see an answer but can't find the working. This time, student would have done working and throw the paper away. We want you to put all your scrap work tied to your answer booklet. So if the examiner has to search where you did your calculation for the answer, at least we can find some trace. Your last hint, your work must be presented in an excellent manner. Legible handwriting in pen, not pencil, pen, diagrams well labeled, and questions numbered as in the question paper. On behalf of the production team, Rajwanti Permal, Indrauti Samichan, Peter Wintz, Joseph McKenzie, I wish to extend to all of you 
best wishes for your exam this week. We hope that the guidance of the good Lord will guide your hands and head and bring success to you. Best wishes and God's blessing. Students, you need to understand that the English A is an English examination and that you must, above all, demonstrate competence in and control of the English language. You must demonstrate the skills you have acquired in all areas of the paper. The proper use of punctuation marks, not only the comma and the full stops, but also the not so frequently used ones, such as the colons, the semicolons, as well as other conventions in writing, such as inverted commas, upper and lower case abbreviations, the writing of numbers, whether in figure or in words, correct spelling, proper sentence structure and paragraphing. The kind of writing that has become popular in email messages and advertisements is not acceptable in this examination. Students should go to the exam with a well-rehearsed procedure for tackling each question. That is, identifying the topic, jotting down points, doing a rough copy, and producing a fair copy. This is especially important in writing a summary, in doing a description, in writing a story, and in producing a cogent argument. Markers should be able to read your work without due difficulty. In section one, when a summary is required, main points must be identified and organized logically within the word limit specified. In cases where the original is reproduced verbatim by the candidate, CXC markers are instructed to interpret this as incompetence. In other words, some attempts must be made by candidates to use their own words. Summarizing is a real-life skill and should be treated as such by candidates. As you write the summary in your own words, be sure to preserve the original meaning. Please, boys and girls, do not ignore the word limit. Also, read the question carefully. Sometimes the question may ask you to do something specific rather than to summarize the entire material. Ensure you do exactly what the question asks. The questions in section two are set in such a way that precise answers are required. You should pay attention to the different ways in which the questions are asked. For example, instructions may sometimes say, give a word. At other times say, give a phrase. At other times still, they say, give a clause. In each case, candidates are asked to give. You need to read and reread the questions themselves as well as passages on which the questions are set. Answers should be to the point. These questions never require paragraph long answers. Responding to a question which requires a precise answer by simply lifting a long extract from a passage is a bad strategy, one which usually results in zero being awarded for such an answer. In section three, many candidates exceed the suggested length for the short story. And though excess is not penalized in the marking, spending too much time on one story can affect performance in others. Every candidate doing this examination should read the best story from preceding years in order to get a sense of what is required. These stories, however, should not be memorized and reproduced with slight alterations. Although the question state word limit as mainly approximations, the experience has been that better students tend to write stories that fall within or not too far out of the word limit. 
Stories that stretch into four, five, six, and more pages tend to be rambling, out of control, and weak. Often, too, students who write excessively long stories have insufficient time to complete the paper properly. Boys and girls, you must focus on building plots, intensifying conflicts, creating a good sense of character, instead of merely relating a string of events. In the case of section four, you must note that argument skills require both mastery of persuasive language and presentation of sound points, supported by suitable examples. Students, you need to read the questions carefully. Make sure you understand keywords then select your points. Choose examples that corroborate your points and be consistent and clear in your presentation. For some inexplicable reason, some candidates operate on the assumption, consciously or unconsciously, that they must agree with the opinion given and if they do not, they will not receive high marks. The fact is, however, that the questions are deliberately set in such a way as to allow for differences of opinion and most likely if you state your real views you will do better than if you merely agree with what you think is the examiner's views. Multiple choice answers. Students, you must be very careful when answering multiple choice items. They are quite often more difficult than long answer questions, as most times the correct answer is listed along with others which seem correct. People who set multiple choice items prepare what are called distractor responses based on the way most students think. These distractors can lead away those students who are not thinking clearly or who have not read the passage well. In doing multiple choice items, look at the question, look at the options. In case of comprehension, read the relevant sections of the passage again, then select an answer which addresses the question asked, not a question you think should be asked. Some questions ask that you select the best of a number of answers. From this, you may gather that some or all of the distractors are probable answers, but you are being asked to find the one answer which is the most suitable or accurate. Boys and girls, we have presented 45 lessons in our CXC English in Focus. We hope that they were of great benefit to you. We trust that you would apply the knowledge and skills you have acquired from us and your teachers in school. We wish you every success. Tonight, I'm extremely pleased to present two other members of our team who have worked assiduously to prepare these lessons for you. Bibi Ali and Prameshwar Lal. Unfortunately, Ronchi Chester could not be here. Goodbye, boys and girls.